In 538 BC, Cyrus, a Persian monarch, captured Babylon. He was a benevolent dictator and told the peoples who had been displaced that they could return to their homelands, provided that they built a temple in which they would pray to their god on his behalf. In the event, only 50,000 Jews decided to return, the rest having mostly been born in exile and having established themselves as merchants in Babylon, decided to stay. Babylon was on a major trade route and many of the Jews had become quite wealthy. Jerusalem did not have the same advantages and seemed a bleak prospect. Two individuals led those who returned, a prince named Zerubbabel, whose name means Seed of Babylon, and Joshua the high priest. Zerubbabel had been born in exile and had never visited the Promised Land, but as the grandson of the last rightful king, he was the only remaining member of David's royal line. So he had to return if God's promises that there would be always a son of David on the throne of Israel were to be fulfilled. Spiritual interests primarily motivated those who returned, for they knew they were not going to be wealthy. It was going to be a hard struggle in a land that had not been cultivated in 70 years and in a city with no walls. When Zerubbabel and Joshua returned to the country, their first priority was to build an altar, followed by a temple to surround it and re-establish themselves as God's people. We must not underestimate the great sacrifice that they made. They left friends, relatives, and brick-built homes. They exchanged prosperity for poverty, fruitful trading for land that had not been cultivated for 70 years. But they had their dream from the Book of Chronicles of re-establishing a royal kingdom with their own king, to be the people of God in the land God had promised their forefathers. The task of constructing the temple, on the other hand, was formidable. They were a small group with little resources. As a result, they chose to construct a much smaller temple than Solomon's, Yet even this seemed too much for them. The Samaritans opposed them, and when Darius took over as king, they lost the stipend that Cyrus had provided them to restore the temple. Darius cut the subsidies that had been given to returning peoples to build temples to help finance military campaigns. So fantasy gave way to reality. The size of the task discouraged the people, and their hearts sank. They stopped building after only two years and for 14 years didn't put another stone on the temple, leaving just the foundations and low walls. On top of scratching for a living, building temples was a luxury they could not afford. Their concern now was mere survival. The economy then entered a deep recession. Food became scarce and expensive, inflation skyrocketed, and food supply was decreased by droughts and disease. They had spent all of the money they had saved in Babylon on food and clothing, so they had no savings. It was a major letdown. They had returned with the intention of rebuilding a nation, but instead discovered that they were barely surviving. Why? They invariably inquired. They came to the conclusion that they had made the right decision to return, but that they had chosen the wrong time to do it. They began to wonder if they should have stayed in Babylon longer saved more money, and waited until they were fit enough to return in greater power and prosperity. Abraham had been made content with a tent and an altar, but they wanted to rebuild. They returned after an 18-year absence with little to nothing to show for it. It was into this depressing situation that Haggai spoke. His prophecy is written in prose, which is very significant. For in scripture, God's thoughts are more often communicated by prose and his feelings by poetry. So there is little of God's feelings in the book. Sometimes even God's very best people need a special word from the Lord. So God gave Haggai the prophet a series of messages intended to challenge the people to continue his work. Their purpose was to arouse the people and to get them going again in rebuilding this temple that God had assigned them. Haggai chapter 1 verses 1 through 15, New King James Version. The command to build God's house. In the second year of King Darius, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, the governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Jehozadak, saying, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, 
This people says, The time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then the word of the Lord came to Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses, and this temple to lie in ruins? Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. You have sown much, and bring in little. You eat, but you do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earn wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple, that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You looked for much, but indeed it came to little, and when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why? says the Lord of hosts. Because of my house that is in ruins, while every one of you runs to his own house. Therefore the heavens above you withhold the dew, and the earth withholds its fruit. For I called for a drought on the land, and the mountains, on the grain, and the new wine, and the oil, on whatever the ground brings forth, on men and livestock, and on all the labor of your hands. Then Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua the son of Jehozadak the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God, and the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him. And the people feared the presence of the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, spoke the Lord's message to the people, saying, I am with you, says the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came forth and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, on the twenty-fourth day of the sixth month, in the second year of King Darius. The first message was delivered. It's a message about selfishness. Despite the fact that these were the remnant and loved the Lord, their excitement for finishing the temple had lessened and they had grown sidetracked. They were constructing their own homes while delaying the construction of the Lord's house. However, Haggai advised them to reorder their priorities. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, New King James Version. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Haggai chapter 2, verses 1 through 9, New King James Version. In the seventh month, on the twenty-first of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, saying, who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now? In comparison with it, is this not in your eyes as nothing? Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear, for thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts, and in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. The second message was sent about seven weeks after the first message. The people had begun to do the Lord's work with fresh zeal and determination. The second message is about excellence. The Lord's job was progressing. The temple was being rebuilt, but those who remembered Solomon's temple in its splendor were disheartened. You're looking in the wrong direction, Haggai said. You don't comprehend what true greatness entails. Big in size, does not always imply greatness. Ezra chapter 3, verse 12, New King James Version. But many of the priests and Levites and heads of the fathers' houses, old men who had seen the first temple, wept with a loud voice when the foundation of this temple was laid before their eyes. Yet many shouted aloud for joy. If we are not careful, the good old days might become a source of despair rather than encouragement. We began to cast doubt on what God is attempting to accomplish today. We can become critical of the present if we get caught up in the past. God used the term, be strong, three times through Haggai. 
We are to be strong in the Lord's work because we have the assurance of God's presence. We also have the assurance of His faithfulness, and we have the confidence of His ability. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26, New King James Version. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. According to the Bible, God will eventually build a new heaven and a new earth. Focus your attention on the things that cannot be shaken. God's throne, God's word, God's promises, God's child, and eternity are all unshakable. I will shake all things with my power so that the things that cannot be shaken remain. God says, God revealed to Haggai that something larger than Solomon's temple would take place in this structure. Years later, when Jesus went into the temple, he brought far greater glory than they had ever seen. Greatness is not a location. The Lord Jesus Christ is a person of greatness. The greatest thing that might happen in any church is for a rumor to spread that Jesus is present in the temple. Haggai chapter 2, verses 10 through 13 New King James Version. On the 24th day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Now ask the priests concerning the law, saying, If one carries holy meat in the fold of his garment, and with the edge he touches bread or stew, wine or oil, or any food, will it become holy? Then the priests answered and said, No. And Haggai said, if one who is unclean because of a dead body touches any of these, will it become unclean? So the priests answered and said, It shall be unclean. On December 24th, around two months later, Haggai began another presentation with two legal questions for his priests. The first question implied that a person cannot transfer holiness. The second question confirmed that when something clean comes into contact with something dirty, it becomes unclean. In other words, while holiness cannot be passed on to another, corruption can. That is true in all aspects of life. We cannot pass on our health to others, but others can pass on their disease to us. If I pour a glass of filthy water into a glass of pure water, does the clean water transfer purity or impurity? We can't transmit cleanliness, but we may transfer filthiness. The principle holds true in the spiritual sphere as well. We can't get clean on the inside by putting on a show. Outward practices do not purify the heart. A new birthing experience is required. Something must be going on on the inside. Haggai chapter 2, verses 14 through 19, New King James Version. Then Haggai answered and said, So is this people, and so is this nation before me, says the Lord. And so is every work of their hands, and what they offer is unclean. And now carefully consider from this day forward, from before stone was laid upon stone in the temple of the Lord, since those days when one came to a heap of twenty ephahs, there were but ten. When one came to the wine vat to draw out fifty baths from the press, there were but twenty. I struck you with blight and mildew and hail in all the labors of your hands, yet you did not turn to me, says the Lord. Consider now from this day forward, from the twenty-fourth day of the ninth month, from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Is the seed still in the barn? As yet the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have not yielded fruit. But from this day I will bless you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, New King James Version. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Haggai chapter 2, verses 20 through 23, New King James Version. And again the word of the Lord came to Haggai on the twenty-fourth day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake heaven and earth. I will overflow the throne of kingdoms. I will destroy the strength of the Gentile kingdoms. I will overthrow the chariots and those who ride in them. The horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, I will take you, Zerubbabel, my servant, and will make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, says the Lord of hosts. The fourth communication arrived on the same day as the third, December 24th on our calendar. This message was directly conveyed to the leader, Zerubbabel, the governor. He was confronted with opposition both on the outside and on the inside. 
God sent his servant Zerubbabel a message of steadfastness. God's servants require encouragement on a regular basis. They must be challenged to remain faithful. God instructed Zerubbabel to be faithful. We can be faithful since God's work is at work in our favor. We do not have to do the Lord's task in our own strength. Begin serving the Lord in a great and powerful way. Claim God's strength in your task. The majority of communication was done using clay tablets back then. When a written document made pledges from the king, the king would take his signet ring and imprint it on the document. It is worth noting that Zerubbabel is mentioned in the Lord's genealogy. Matthew chapter 1, verse 12, New King James Version. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconia begot Shealtiel, and Shealtiel begot Zerubbabel. Oh, how beautiful it is when Christ comes and stamps his mark on your life. I have chosen you, God said to Zerubbabel through Haggai. I've searched the field and selected you. What projects have you started that need to be completed? Teaching, child rearing, God's service? Here are three priorities to cheer you up. First, claim the promise that the Lord is with you. Second, anticipate God's blessings. And third, recognize that God has chosen you. You have the ability to do something for the Lord that no one else can. So God tells us to be faithful. Continue to work for the Lord.